Today, guys, we're jumping into Overwatch 2, where we're going to be checking out the best settings on PC to make sure we're maximizing our FPS, keeping our latency as low as possible, and getting crisp visibility in the game. Most of the other settings videos I've seen for Overwatch 2 have focused purely on FPS. However, visibility in such a fast-paced game like Overwatch 2 is massively important. If you don't have good visibility and good, crisp visuals, then it's very hard to actually pick out those priority targets in fights and actually win games. If you do find this video informative or you just want to let me know some of your preferences on settings, maybe something different to what I've said, then leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get the chat going and leave a like on the video because it really helps out the channel. Overwatch 2 is free to play, so we've had a bunch of new players coming in needing these settings, which is why I wanted to cover this video. But not every game releasing at the moment is free to play, unfortunately. However, that does not need to be a massive problem because today's video sponsor, Kingwin, has you covered. So you're likely all aware that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 releases this this week on all platforms. Well, Kingwin is the best and most trusted site for purchasing Modern Warfare 2 as well as many other titles for cheaper than anywhere else. They even offer discounts on PS Plus and Xbox Live as well as currencies like Apex Coins, Roblox Robux, and even PSN cards. I mean, who wouldn't want a $100 PSN card for just 80 bucks? There's also a really easy to enter giveaway on the site right now where you can actually win Kingwin gift cards and use them on the site to purchase some games. Also, once your basket is full of games and cards, making sure Modern Warfare 2 is in there, of course, you can use the code BESTOFFER14 at checkout for a 14% discount on some already incredibly cheap prices. And if you thought that was good, just wait, there's more. For you keen-eyed viewers, I am going to be hiding three unique 14-digit codes that will look something like this throughout this whole settings video. If you find a code and you're the first one to nab it, then you'll be able to enter it on the site and get yourself $25, pounds or euros in a gift card to spend on Kingwin. So head to the description right now, click the link or use the QR code on screen to be directed to the Kingwin site. Fill up your basket, get yourself a copy of Modern Warfare 2 while you're at it and use the code BESTOFFER14 for that 14% discount. And if you find one of the hidden 14 digit codes throughout the video, you can head to a different link down in the description, enter it in there in the box and you'll have grabbed yourself some free currency to buy some awesome games. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the settings. Starting off in video with display mode. You want to set this to full screen in almost all circumstances. If you're someone who is a content creator or a streamer and you really need to alt tab quick in and out of the game a lot, then borderless windowed is still decent. However, full screen is the best for try hard players or people just trying to get the lowest latency. It makes it so the game is exclusively running when you've got it actually open on your screen. It's not trying to render anything in the background. That's the same for all games basically. So full screen is best for latency and FPS. Target display, you shouldn't need to change this. You'll know if it's open on the correct monitor. That's all this is saying. So this should be set correctly anyway. Resolution is an important one to check. When the game first started up for me, the game was actually at 60 hertz. That's what the bracketed number is here. However, you want to make sure that you have this set correctly uh, at your native resolution, which for me is 1920 by 1080. And then in brackets, you want your monitor refresh rate, which for me is 240 hertz. The last thing you want to be doing is running the game at 60 hertz when you've got a 100 144 or a 240 hertz monitor. So makes we've got that maxed out at the correct resolution and hertz. Field of view, unfortunately we can only go as high as 103 field of view, which is actually quite low, but you definitely want to max that out. Field of view, it does lower FPS a little bit, but only when you get to really high values, which you can't even get to in Overwatch for whatever reason, because that's how they've designed it. Um, and having a high field of view uh, really improves the visibility in game. It allows you to see as much on your screen as possible, spot enemies who are hiding off in places where you might not see them otherwise. Wise, so make sure you've got this maxed out. Aspect ratio, 16 by 9 is standard. If you've got a widescreen monitor or something like that, you'll probably have options here for that. You just, but for most people, uh, running 1920 by 1080 or 1440p or something like that, 16 by 9 is standard. Dynamic render scale, turn this off, not something we need to use. For render scale, I'll come back to this in more detail later, but for most people, the recommendation is to just leave it at automatic. Uh, what this will do is it will just set it to basically 100%. So whatever you've set as your resolution up here, it will render it at the exact same resolution of that. I won't try and upsample it or downsample it. That's going to give you 
overall what should be the best latency and FPS, but a little trick is to actually set this to 101%, so set it to custom and then 101%, and I'll come back to why we do this when we get to the graphics quality tab. For frame rate, set this to custom, and then you can set your maximum frame rate. I'd recommend actually for best input latency, because this game can run at some really high frames, uh, to set this at your monitor's refresh rate and not go above that. Having that cap will actually give you much better latency when you push your GPU way too hard uh, past kind of useful levels of, of FPS, it actually can lower latency. So set a maximum frame rate here and you're good to go. Nextly, we've got the uh, V-Sync. Keep this off. We do not want this on. This adds input latency horrifically just to improve screen tearing if you happen to get any. It's not worth it. There's other ways to get rid of screen tearing using G-Sync and stuff like that. We don't want to use in-game V-Sync. Triple buffering, leave this off, and then reduce buffering, turn this on. These are two options to just help with latency overall. NVIDIA Reflex, you've got two options here, enabled or enabled plus boost. The difference between the two options here is enabled is where you've got an equally strong GPU and CPU, uh, which is like what I've got. I've got pretty strong both. Uh, enabled plus boost is actually very useful for people who have quite weak CPUs and strong GPUs. That means you're in a CPU bound uh, system and Enable Plus Boost will work better for you. If you don't know which one of these to pick, just try a game out on the practice area with Enabled, try one with the in the practice area with Enable Plus Boost, see which one runs better, do some benchmarks, and you'll figure out which one works better, but definitely don't set it to Disabled. This is really good for latency. Then we've got Gamma Correction, Contrast, and Brightness. These are all personal preference, quite honestly. I've left them all at default because it looks fine to me, and I know most people honestly do, but if for some reason your monitor just doesn't seem to display the game very nicely. You can try turning up the brightness a little bit, make the game a little more bright. I don't find the need to do it. Okay, now into graphics quality, and this should be pretty quick to cover off because there's only a couple things to cover. For graphics quality, just set it to low to start off with, and then it will set all the options down here. And then we're going to go in and dial in those options a bit more. Firstly, let me cover high quality upsampling. By default, this will be set to the value of default. Uh, which means there's no upsampling or anything happening in the game. And that will actually give you the best latency. So if you are on a system uh, that is quite weak or kind of medium to weak, that's probably your best option. And you want to go back to video and make sure that you've got your render scale set to automatic. However, if you want to have the best visibility, a little trick here is to set your in-game resolution to 101%. So you've upscaled it a tiny little bit very, very small. It's not going to have any effect as long as you've got a decently kind of mid to strong system. And then set high quality upsampling to AMD FSR 1.0 and put image sharpening to 0.8. What this does is give you a large amount of sharpening on the game and it really makes the game crisp. I've had this on for a few days now, and I'm able to spot enemies so much easier who are hiding in little head glitches at the back areas of maps when we're pushing the payload. It's really helped me out, a really amazing trick for visibility. Then texture quality, set this to high, honestly. This has such little effect on FPS, if any. It's kind of down to how much uh, VRAM your GPU has. If you've got a really low VRAM GPU, like I'm talking two gig or below, which not too many people have these days, then maybe you could drop this down to medium. But for anyone else, the textures on this game are not resource heavy at all, and having it at high gives you really good visibility. Same for texture filtering quality. This is something which every single person should set to epic. Texture filtering or anisotropic filtering, as it's called in many other games, is uh, the probably least resource intensive setting that you can just activate and put to the max, which gives you really good visibility in games. You should never be running this on low. It makes the game look horrific for no reason. Then for everything else on this settings page, just set it to the lowest setting, whether that's low or off. You see, as we go down, I'll just prove to you I've got everything set to the lowest or off because all of these settings are kind of superfluous things that don't really help out. Um, where it says damage effects, you've got default and low, makes you've got low. It's not it's not the top setting for whatever reason, but yeah, you want to make sure this is on low. These are all things which are uh, extra kind of VFX, extra uh, fluff, which doesn't help out much with visibility. It's a bit more resource heavy for absolutely no reason in a quite cartoony game. So yeah, just turn all these off or to low. And then in details, this is quite a useful thing to do. I'd recommend you display your performance stats and then you have your frame rate on and your network latency. These are probably the two most important things. Frame rate is what you can see here. It's 
capped at 60 in the menus, which is fine, doesn't matter. But in game, you'll be able to actually see what FPS you're getting, see if your settings are helping you out. And then network latency, this is just basically what your ping is. So you can quite easily see if you start lagging in game, you can go, ah, oh, I've got high ping. That explains why my shots aren't landing. It's not that I'm just bad at the game. Um, these are two really important things to have on. Before we bring this video to a close, there's some other very key settings I want to go through that are outside of the graphics area. So let's start off in the sound general area. And in sounds at the bottom, make sure you've got play sound when enemy eliminated and play sound when teammate eliminated both on. This is very, very useful for keeping up the amount of info you know is happening in the game. It will play a different sound cue when a teammate gets killed as opposed to an enemy getting killed. And it means you don't need to keep looking up at the uh, kill feed. I, I find a lot of players, they just don't realize that like, three of their team have died in the fight and they go, why am I, why aren't I getting healed? What's, what's happening? Well, it's because they all died. And having this on means you just hear that sound cue, you hear those three sound cues one after the other and you go, oh God, my team are dead, I need to back up. Very, very helpful to improve your gameplay experience. In controls, this might not actually do anything, but a lot of people are claiming that it does. If you come down to the controller area, even if you're playing on keyboard and mouse, make sure you click on advanced and turn the aim smoothing to zero. People seem to be thinking that by having this turned on at all, it's bleeding into how your mouse feels and it can make your mouse feel really sticky and make you not really feel like you've got that one-to-one -one aim, which uh, is quite important that you, you get that set correctly. Then for crosshair, if you want to know what kind of crosshairs I run, I'm switching between currently a green and a cyan color and I've got my kind of standard Valorant style uh, crosshair, which uh, you can see all the settings for here if you want a screenshot and this just works out nicely for me. In gameplay, an important thing in here is the enable high precision mouse input. Definitely make sure that's on. That's going to once again help to making your aim feel that little bit better. And lastly, for improved visibility and less visual clutter on your screen in terms of what's happening, turn your camera shake to reduced and put your HUD shake off. This way, when you start getting shot or the enemy far decides to completely ult and nuke your whole team, at least you can see your HUD properly and you can check your health and know when, whether you need to get heals, whether you need to get barriered, you know, you're not having your HUD shake all over the place and you can't really see what's going on. So lastly, those settings are very important. And there we go, guys. That is everything for today. I hope you have enjoyed this one and it works out nicely for you when you jump back into Overwatch after watching this video. Uh, these settings have absolutely improved how I've been playing, especially that AMD FSR one for the improved sharpness. It is an absolute game changer. If it has helped you out, as I mentioned at the start, leave a comment down below and a like. Check out Kingwin for uh, some amazing deals on games, including Modern Warfare 2 that releases very, very soon. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.